Alright folks, in today's video we're diving into one of ham radio's most intriguing phenomena, gray line propagation. As day fades into night, and night into day, a magical band of twilight known as the gray line wraps around our planet. During these fleeting moments, the ionosphere transforms, creating unique conditions that let radio signals travel further and connect to distant corners of the Earth. In this video, we'll unravel the science behind this atmospheric marvel and explore how savvy operators harness these transitions to make contacts that defy the ordinary. Get ready to tune in, because the twilight holds secrets that supercharge your communications. Let's jump right in. Looking to elevate your amateur radio experience? Join the American Radio Relay League, the ultimate community for ham radio enthusiasts. By joining the ARRL, you will get access to educational resources to build your knowledge, exclusive publications, and opportunities to engage in public service. As a member, you'll enjoy access to four digital magazines. Take a deep dive with QST and build your skills. If not the ARRL, then who? We're the ones protecting the ham radio spectrum in Washington, D.C., ensuring our voices are heard. Use code APE1 for a free hydration pack with a one or three year subscription. Let's define the gray line, highlight its significance, and discuss its practical applications for improving DX contacts. The gray line represents the Earth's twilight zone, where daylight meets darkness. It's crucial in amateur radio for taking advantage of unique propagation opportunities that this transition offers. The gray line is a transition zone of solar illumination that occurs as the Earth rotates. It's the transition from day to night or night to day. This dynamic terminator line creates favorable ionospheric conditions that enhance HF signal propagation. During gray line periods, signals often face less atmospheric interference and achieve stronger refraction through the ionosphere. Skywave propagation is a critical phenomenon for amateur radio operators, providing the ability to communicate over vast distances by utilizing the ionosphere. Without this, HF communication will be limited to local areas or ground wave paths. We will explain the basics of this phenomenon, dive deep into ionospheric layers, and discuss how conditions vary, and provide strategies to optimize HF communication. The ionosphere is a key component of HF communication, created by the ionizing effects of solar radiation on the Earth's upper atmosphere. This region allows for the bending or refraction of radio waves, enabling long-distance communication. The ionosphere comprises of layers, D, E, F1, and F2, that vary in density and function. These layers are dynamic, influenced by solar activity, time of day, and other factors, which means their behavior directly impacts radio signal propagation. Gray line propagation is influenced by both seasonal variations and the solar cycle. During solar maximum, higher frequency bands like 15 and 10 meters experienced enhanced conditions while solar minimum favors lower bands. Additionally, seasonal changes in sunrise and sunset timings shift the gray line window, necessitating adjustment in operating schedules. Geomagnetic disturbances can further alter propagation, either boosting or hindering conditions. Sunspot cycles and solar activity significantly influence HF propagation. The 11-year sunspot cycle alternates between solar maxima and minima, affecting which bands are more reliable. During the maxima, higher bands like 15, 12, and 10 thrive. In contrast, minima often enhance lower band performance such as 80 and 160 meters. Solar flares and CMEs, coronal mass ejections, inject unpredictability in the propagation, creating short-lived blackouts or auroral enhancements. Monitoring the solar flux index, SFI, is essential. It offers a quick measure of solar radiation intensity, guiding operators to optimize their band choices. The ionosphere's layered structure is critical to understanding gray line propagation. The D layer, most active during daylight, diminishes past sunset, allowing HF signals to travel further. Higher layers like the E and F layers remain ionized longer, especially the F2 layer, essential for long-range DX. These interactions peak during gray line transitions. Gray line propagation offers specific advantages for HF bands, particularly lower frequency ones like 160, 80, and 40 meters. These bands typically face high daylight absorption in the D layer, which diminishes during gray line transitions. 
Even higher bands like 30 and 20 can see extended openings, aiding in long-distance DX operations. Seasonal changes in solar activity further influence the magnitude of these effects. Gray line propagation can be efficiently utilized with the help of modern tools and resources. Websites such as VOACAP and PropView offer reliable propagation forecasts. Sunrise and sunset calculators allow you to align your schedules with gray line transitions accurately. Furthermore, DX logging software often integrates gray line overlays, giving real-time insights into optimal conditions. These tools collectively make it simpler to harness the full potential of gray line propagation. Here's a screen cap that I took from VOACAP, and if you haven't used this tool, I encourage you to do so. It's very helpful when scheduling or predicting propagation. When you look at this, you see two shaded areas. They represent dark. The line between light and dark is the gray line. This particular picture shows the Earth twice. I'm not sure why they do that, but they do that. When you're operating gray line, you want to try to point or orient your signals along the terminator. That's the transition phase. When working the gray line, in most cases, both stations benefit most when they are on or very near the terminator, because that's where the D layer, the main absorber of HF signals, is minimal. But the higher layers of the ionosphere remain energized. Essentially, if you're in the gray line zone and the station you are trying to reach is also near the gray line zone, you have the best shot of taking advantage of this enhanced propagation path. It doesn't have to be exactly on the terminator for both stations. There is a window before and after local sunrise or sunset when propagation can be especially good. That window can vary, sometimes up to an hour or so on either side of the actual sunrise or sunset. Stations slightly past or ahead of the gray line can still experience improved conditions if one end is near the gray line and the other end isn't too far removed in terms of local time. The best case, both you and the receiving station are within the morning or evening twilight zone. Second best, one station is in or near twilight and the other is close enough in local time that the ionosphere on that end is still working favorably. It's worth checking. It never hurts to listen or call, even if you are the only one in the gray line and the other station is slightly past it. There can still be residual enhanced propagation for a short while. Overall, the greatest gray line benefit occurs when both ends are in twilight, but propagation near the terminator can still extend a bit beyond a narrow band, especially for the lower HF bands, 160, 80, and 40 meters, where the D-layer losses are the biggest factor. To fully leverage gray line propagation, it's crucial to adopt strategic operating techniques. Start by listening for signals 15 to 30 minutes before transitions, as conditions often improve abruptly. Directional antennas can significantly enhance signal reception and clarity when aimed along the terminator. Also, remain flexible with band selection. Higher bands may briefly open, providing unexpected DX opportunities. These practices will maximize your results. To conclude, the gray line offers unique opportunity to enhance your amateur radio operations. By understanding the atmospheric conditions along the terminator and utilizing tools like maps and calculators, you can time your on-air sessions for maximum success. Don't forget to document your experiences. Refining your methods over time will yield even greater results. And that's going to wrap it up, folks. I appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below, and I will do my best to respond. As always, thanks for watching.